Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I'm going to review for you this little guy. This is the Klutzley Knives ACC-1C. Um, this is a very interesting piece that not a lot of people in the American knife community have heard of, and uh, so it's it's a lot of fun to check one out. And the way that this happened is that my buddy Jean-Luc actually donated this knife to the channel, which is super generous of him. Thank you so much for that, Jean-Luc. Um, uh, but uh, I wouldn't have probably gotten a chance to check one out otherwise, because Klutzley is not super well known in the States. Um, they are a Swiss company. They are an old Swiss company, like... 100 plus years old making knives, family sort of concern. Um, and they are from Switzerland. I'm uh, pretty neutral about that, but some might consider it like the Swiss flag, kind of a big plus. Eh? Eh? Okay. Um, but no, nonetheless, they, they are a Swiss company through and through, and they are still based out of there. And in fact, they're not super well distributed in the States. The only company that seems to sell them is uh, New Graham Knives. Uh, nobody else seems to carry them. So um, let's do a size comparison real quick for you. Right here is your uh, Spydeco Delica. Uh, right here is. Uh, uh, your Ontario rat number one in D2 steel, and right here is your steel wheel cut jack in three inch. And uh, what the heck, the Alamic Knives uh, Busker right here. So uh, let me set my tee down so I don't knock it over. Um, anyways, so there's your size comparison. So let's go on ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly in this very, very interesting knife. First off, on the, the, the good side here, this is actually a handmade knife. Um, this isn't something that I consider to be good in and of itself. I mean, it's neat, it's interesting, but it is different relative to a lot of knives that come across my table. Very seldom am I dealing with knives that are not predominantly CNC'd, or at least CNC'd at some step of their process. So that's interesting, and it's a little bit different. Uh, like I said, it is Swiss made, and you know, Swiss made can mean some nice things on occasion. It can also mean some stupid things, but uh, in this case, it, it, hey, why not, right? Um, one piece of very interesting history here is that this is actually designed by Michael Walker. That is the uh, the, the Walker line of lock, Michael Walker. Uh, he made this design actually uh, 22 years ago. Um, this is a 22-year-old knife. They've been making this guy continuously ever since. Um, and so in some ways, A, you've got a historic link because Michael Walker is one of the greats of the knife-making industry, um, and it captures a, a period in time, I think. Uh, in many ways, this looks a little bit retro to knife guys, uh, and so it's interesting to see something that's in today. Day, uh, that's, uh, you know, in production today that was made by a great and made kind of in a different era. So that's neat to me very much. Next thing, um, I got to say, this has a very nice clip. You can see here it is a spring clip here. It's got plenty of ramp to it. It's got plenty of A. It's nicely smooth. And the fact that your uh, pocket is going to be sliding onto this smooth carbon fiber, absolutely excellent. It works great. And every time I carry this knife, the clip was a pleasure. And it hangs the knife at the proper angle. The knife itself being pretty slim as well. Which, by the way, I should probably highlight. This knife is pretty slim as well. Um, This is slimmer than the Spydeco Delica. It's not a big knife. And so this is very, very nice in the pocket to carry. It's also, relatively speaking, pretty lightweight. Let's see here. This is coming in at 2.18 ounces, which is not bad at all, considering that the length of it is... Let's see here, about three inches. See, so less than an ounce an inch, which is great, um, considering that the bulk of it is made from carbon fiber. Not surprising, but it's good to see. And honestly, this was a pleasure to carry, and it carries nicely even in slacks or something like that. Um, this is a knife that won't be weighing down your pocket like a freaking boat anchor, so that's very good. The size of it, by the way, is very nice as well. This is a uh, three-inch knife. We'll talk about what I just did there in a bit here. But um, anyways, it's a three-inch knife, which is pretty great um, because I, I feel like that's a great size. You know, it's big enough that everything, you can cut whatever you need to. It's not so big that it's illegal everywhere and out of place. Uh, so I, I like it very much. The next thing is the blade on this guy. is actually pretty nice. Um, This is ATS-34, which is an, a steel that is very similar to RWL-34, which I've used a great deal in the past, as well as sim, uh, CPM-154. It's in that same sort of family. Um, This is a, a very, very nice blade steel. It takes a good edge. It holds it for a while. And frankly, I find it pretty easy to sharpen up uh, relative to some of your higher... Well, I don't know about higher end, but relative to your super mega uber steels, this is is pretty nice. And actually, it's ground to cut. You can see here, it's got a nice hollow grind to it. And this this guy absolutely does cut. And I appreciated that very, very much carrying this. Um, And, and so that's great. A gentleman's knife should cut 100% and should slice. And, and this is a good one. So uh, that, that, that's very, very nice. Um, Next thing, I, I got to say, the, uh, the it has a, uh, a little bit of a front flip to do it. Um, You can see here that it's got a little bit of uh, texturing up here, and if you kind of catch that at the top, you can very easily pop this guy open with your thumb. Uh, it works a little bit better when I'm not trying to hold it at a horizontal angle, but uh, the, the, the tent on it is not very strong, and we'll come back to that in a bit there, but it, you can absolutely 
pop this guy out with your thumb with a little bit of wrist. So that gives you a different option as opposed to just using the thumb stud. It's more of a novelty than anything. And for a knife like this, I found myself just using the stud, but it's something that you got there. Um, the uh, backspacer on this guy is very nice. And in fact, you can see some very nice fit and finish on this guy. I mean, take a look at this. It is in fact, uh, two different pieces of metal, but unless you're really right up close on it, you can't really tell. And the fact that they use just a uh, nice metal here is uh, they didn't cheap out. They could have done something else, but no, that's, that's nice. And then finally, uh, the carbon fiber on this guy is very, very nice. So um, as you saw in the disassembly, uh, this is actually carbon fiber. And in fact, if we kind of look at the side of it here, you can see the layers of the carbon fiber throughout. This is not just a carbon fiber sticker. Although it has a very nice gloss to it, I'm going to see if I can kind of just rotate it around and let you see the, the light playing with the carbon fiber here. And actually, there's some history here. Klotzley was the, the first uh, company to make a carbon fiber knife way, way back when with Spyderco. So that's kind of an interesting thing. This is a carbon fiber knife from one of the progenitors of the carbon fiber knife. And so that's great. And honestly, it's really cool. Um, It's almost hard to say in person. It, it looks like a non-committal, boring carbon fiber from everybody else. Um, But if we compare it to other carbon fiber, this is way more interesting. Like here against your ZT. I mean, yeah, sure, this looks nice, but this is way more more cool. So I love very, very, very much this carbon fiber on here. That's great. And so to me, um, th those things are the good. The, the carbon fiber is very nice. Backspace is good. Fit and finish is pretty good on the whole here. Um, It's got a, uh, a nice little bit of front flipper tube to it. Uh, it's got a good blade, ATS-34 steel that is actually ground to cut. It's got great size, a great clip, a Michael Walker design, and it's made in Switzerland which, like the flag, can be a plus for many people. Um, on the great side, honestly, this is a gentleman's knife by definition. And I like that very much. Oh, I forgot to mention, it's very easy to unlock the knife because you got a nice big cut out here. Anyways, this is a gentleman's knife in definition um, because it is a, a very pretty knife. It has very classy materials. It is carbon fiber. It is metal. It is a nice chromed clip here. Um, it is relatively small. It's not like, oh my God, crazy buoy knife. You don't bust it out. It's got a little bit of a clip point to it there, but uh, it's a nice swedge, by the way. Did I mention the swedge? I didn't mention the swedge. Um, it's classy, and honestly, it's also unique. This is something that you pull out of your pocket, and even knife geeks are going to look at it and go, wait, what the hell's that? And it gives you a chance to tell a story and whatnot. So to me, at least, what's great about this is that this is in many ways a prototypical gentleman's folder. This is exactly what gentleman's folder means. And so, at least to me, that, that's pretty great. On the bad side, a couple of things. First off, the thumb study is out in the slicing path here. Um, you know, there's a fair amount of blade beyond it. It's not the end of any worlds, but it is something that was a minor frustration to me on a couple of occasions, especially cutting into a thicker foam. That thumb stud can snag a little bit. Next thing, it is hard to find in the USA. Like I said, there's only one cell in New Graham Knives, and actually at the time of filming, they're out of them too. Um, they, they've expressed that they're going to restock at some point, but uh, that, that does make it difficult. And we'll talk about why that's uh, probably the case later on, but still. Um, next thing, the detent on this guy is a bit weak here. I mean, Let's see here. Am I able? No, I'm not able to pop it out like that. But honestly, um, given the fact that there are these surfaces on there and that the detent is, this was not something I felt really comfortable just dropping into my pocket um, and carrying that way. I, I felt like I needed to carry it clipped here so that the blade would stay in. It's not the end of any particular worlds. Uh, and, you know, it, it works. Um, and you can even flick it still. But uh, the detent is not super strong on this guy. Next thing, um, the design is a little bit older. I mean, I, I think uh, if you look at this relative to some of what's coming out. This is from the 90s, but the thing is, well, yeah, it's from the 90s. That's simple fact of life. And so, you know, I, I don't think, I think it's aged well, but it is a little bit older than some. Next thing, there is a billboarded clip on here, but that said, it's actually fairly classy in the grand scheme of things. The little plus on there. Why not, right? Um, I'm more okay with it than usual here, but it's still not something I'm in love with. Um, it does need some chamfering throughout, you know, particularly on surfaces like up at the top here. This could use a chamfer. The, the swedge here is nicely enough chamfered here, but a bunch of these areas just need a little bit more rounding. The liner here absolutely needs a little bit of a chamfer here. Um, those things are just little details, but they're little details that they should get right. There is a little bit of lock stick on this guy. As you can hear it there. Um, it's almost, because there's such good access to this lock bar, it doesn't bother me particularly. Um, it almost feels like a little bit of extra safety measure because it's so easy to get past it, but it is a thing. And if that bothers you, that'll bother you. Then finally on the bad side, they are using a permanent thread locker on the pivot for this guy. 
The um, I talked to the Klutzley guy in, in anticipation of this review because I needed to find out some information on it. And he actually mentioned brought that up on his own. He said that they dialed these in, so to speak, and then locked the pivot shut. Um, I was able to unlock it using uh, just a soldering iron, hold a little bit of heat on there, and then, you know, heat, turn, heat, turn, heat, turn, heat, turn, until finally it, it lets go, and not using a lot of torque, by the way. And that popped it open, no problem, but it wasn't something that I'm super in love with. It's still a little bit unpleasant. Um, For a knife like this, it's not like the action tunes up very well, so, you know, does it matter? No. But it isn't something I'm super in love with. Um, and so, at least to me, that's what's bad here, is that they did use permanent thread locker on the pivot, which is going to be a minor pain the first time you take it apart. Um, next thing, it'll need serious chamfers throughout. The billboarded clip isn't great. The design is a little bit older, but the thing is, it's a little bit older. That's okay. Aged well. Um, the detent on this guy is a little weak, leaving me feeling a little reluctant to carry this guy just loose in my pocket. Um, and then it is hard to find in the U.S. of A., uh, and it, it does have a thumb study in the slicing path. On the ugly side, unfortunately, there is some ugly here, and the, the, the biggest source of the ugly is visible right inside there, and that is the Teflon washes. So I talked to the maker about this, because, you know, I gotta ask, and, you know, if I've got a, an opportunity to ask, I might as well. And what they said is that they prefer the smoothness of the Teflon washes, even though they're using phosphor bronze and other knives. This is something that we agreed to disagree on, because to my taste, this knife actually isn't very smooth. As I'm opening this guy, you can kind of see, and I'm trying not... You know, I'm not trying to exaggerate this or anything, but it has that kind of typical Teflon stick slip, stick slip, stick slip sort of motion to it. Um, it's not something I really like, and even compared to other knives running on Teflon, this just isn't that impressive. If they had done a Jason Guthrie style, just stellar out of the park Teflon action, I would have shut right the heck up. This would have been a little note in the bad side, and I barely would have mentioned it. But uh, this is just not very good, and I kind of want to hammer this home because I come off snobby sometimes. But the issue here is not the Teflon. Itself, it's the fact that this just isn't a very good action on Teflon or otherwise. And because it's on Teflon, you can't improve it with washer polishing a wear in like good fossil bronze. I mean, this isn't even as good as Teflon can be. And so as a result, this knife is less smooth than a well-maintained, uh, well, ah, well that is, Spyderco PM2 or something like that, or a Benchmade 940. Um, it's got that unfortunate action, and since it's Teflon, you're just kind of stuck. And that's that's just really ugly to me. And so, to me, especially at this price point, I struggle with Teflon, but I struggle even more when the Teflon action just isn't very compelling. And as a result, the knife comes off feeling not really that smooth and kind of ugly. I handed this to the fiancé and had her open it. She said, that's a little weird. So um, I, I, th th that's, to me, really ugly is the fact that the action is bad on Teflon. Then the other ugly thing here is the price tag. This knife is 325 bucks. That's a lot of money. Um, and this is for a pair of carbon fiber scales, a line of some ATS-34, and some big old Teflon washes. The maker actually, to his credit, seems uh, very unhappy with that as, as well. And he actually blames the high value of the Swiss franc, which is not something I'm unfamiliar with. Anything Swiss is expensive in the States. That's just a fact of life. But the thing is, even putting that aside, here in the States, uh, and I imagine elsewhere in the world, this guy is very, very expensive. And relative to a lot of the other options for a gentleman's knife, this is towards the top end. Uh, and so, to me at least, that's that's pretty ugly, is that the price on this is very, very high, um, even if it's out of fact, is, or due to fact is out of their control, and then the Teflon washes lead to a really unpleasant action here. Um, so let's go into the final conclusion, and the conclusion here is that this is a very interesting knife. I mean, at some level, there's a lot to love here. It's a Michael Walker design with serious history, uh, both in terms of the company and in terms of the design. This is an interesting knife. Like, intellectually, this has a lot going on, and I like that. It's also built by hand. It's very unusual, and it's foreign even to knife nerds. You pull one of these guys out of your pocket, even at Blade Show, people are going to look at you a little funny, which is unusual. The carbon fiber is very, very nice, and with the pedigree of being the first people to make carbon fiber handles, that's pretty excellent. And you know what? This is absolutely a pretty compelling gentleman's knife option. Um, I love the gentleman's knife category, and this is an odd entry, but it's a good entry. But it is unfortunately not without its flaws. I mean, there are some minor issues here and there. It definitely needs a little bit of chamfering here and there. It's got some other issues, but the action is honestly the big disappointment to me. I feel like I would feel very differently about this knife if it had a great, smooth action. Um, But the thing is, if you're trying to sell handmade mastery, you need to show the mastery. And so if they're gonna do the Teflon thing, they need to do it really freaking well. But as it is, unfortunately, with this action, it feels like a very professionally made knife with an amateurish action. They finished a Rolex with a plastic, you know, cheap plastic crown on it. Um, 
and, and that to me as an action snob is kind of a deal breaker. And I'd struggle a lot less with that if this were priced much less expensively. If this guy were 120 bucks or something, 150 bucks, absolutely, I'd put up with that. But 325 is a lot of money, particularly with those kinds of substantial flaws, because there were a lot of really great options for gentlemen's knives at or below this price point. The Spydeco Chaparral is another knife with carbon fiber, uh, it's steel that's certainly also competitive. I don't really feel like I can rank the two next to each other there. But it's also small. It's also very nice. The Benchmade Valet and Nakamura, also very, very solid. Um, you're only 75 bucks away from a Chris Reeve Knives Mnandi or a, uh, an Alamic Busco, which is another knife. Uh, the uh, Burger EXK is another great choice. And even uh, this little guy here, this is the Booze Blades Mini Aero. Um, another interesting gentleman's knife option uh, that's probably going to be released by the time this video airs. Um, uh, prototype. Anyways, uh, this is a very, very interesting piece, though. And if you are interested, like I said, although there were a lot of options, this is very, very nice. It's got great history, hand construction, and it's not in the pocket of every other knife guy. And so I think I'm going to leave it there, is that it's expensive, it's got some flaws, but the thing is, it's unique, it's interesting, it's a great gentleman's folder. And if that sounds like something you're interested in, well, this little guy is going to be a big plus for you. Anyways, sorry, I just can't resist the Swiss jokes. Um, <laughs> hope this has been interesting to you that it wasn't too cheesy. Uh, another one? Thought I was done? No, no, I wasn't. Have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.